what's going on guys welcome back to the channel lone wolf 902 today is episode one of my three-part series how to get started in hot tent camping so today's video is going to be all on hot tents as you can see behind me i've got six very different hot tents lined up we're going to go through each tent and we're going to talk about which tent might be best for you so today i'm going to be using my t1 stove from pomali as a reference placed in each tent to show where the stove jacks are and to give you guys a general layout of how much room is that going to take up i do have a review on this stove so if you're interested in more specs of the stove check that out it has measurements all kinds of stuff on it so you can take that video and use it with this video to better fit your idea of how big of a tent you would need for how many people you're going with maybe you're going by yourself maybe you're going to be out in a lot of rain not too much snow all those factors are gonna come into play in this video. So let's get started right away. All right, guys, we're gonna start off with the largest tent out of the collection today, and this is the Pomali Manta tent. Before we get started, I do wanna mention that I do have video reviews on every one of these tents that you will see in this video. So if you are looking for more of an in-depth look at that particular tent, head on over to my gear review playlist and have a look through the video. Like I said, this is the Pomali Manta tent. It is a six-person tent. It is a very heavy duty fabric. It is not canvas. It is not silk nylon. It's right in the middle. Okay, so coming in for a closer look at this fabric, this is very interesting because it's got a silver lining on it. So what this does is it'll help illuminate the inside of the tent. The whole tent is silver lined. Uh, it also reflects a certain amount of heat. It's not gonna reflect a crazy amount of heat, but it does reflect a little bit of thermal value. It also helps block out a little bit of thermal heat so if you're in the summertime, like right now, I can feel it's quite a bit cooler in here for two reasons. I'm in the shade and this is reflecting the heat off the backside where the sun is. Um, and it, like I said, it, it helps illuminate the tent. So this fabric is more of a heavy duty fabric. It's not a canvas and it's not a silk nylon. So I would put it right in the middle. So this tent being as large as it is, they do have different sizes of this tent. I will say that they go from one person all the way to six person. This large tent being a heavy fabric, I would use this primarily for truck camping. So if you guys are in a truck camping and you're looking for a large tent for a large group of campers, or maybe you're doing an elk hunt or you're out doing whatever, and you're going to be staying in that area for a long time, this makes an excellent base camp style tent and it offers a ton of view. You can see the doorway, like I was saying, massive view makes it really good for sitting inside. If it's raining, you can stand up inside of this tent. It's very tall. It does have a removable nose cap, so you can vent the heat out the top as well as the sides, as well as down below. You can see there's two vents, helps with ventilation. All right, so coming over to where the stove is situated, you can see we got the stove jack opening right here. There's only one stove jack in this tent, so this stove has to go right here. What that does is it defines where the sleeping areas are, okay? So you can put one person there, another person here, right by the vented areas. It is a very large tent, like I was saying, so if you do have a bunk bed system, kind of like those stackable cots, you could do it right there and have it go up and then have another area for your table or chair. You can stand up in this tent very, very tall, so you can walk indoors with a snow-covered jacket. You can shake it off. You can hang it on the center pole to dry. You do have a lot of living space in this tent, which is why it makes an excellent base camp choice. Do have another base camp option let's move on over to that it's a little bit different of a setup all right guys coming over to our second tent this is again another six person tp style hot tent there's a few differences with this tent though the last tent was a heavier tent with a thicker fabric this is a ripstop nylon so this is a large tent that can pack lighter and smaller so that might kind of be a good thing for you you might not really need it if you're taking your truck however if you are taking a lighter tent it may offer up pulling it in on a pulp sled or possibly even breaking some of the components apart and packing it in two separate backpacks if you're going with a friend now right away you can notice the stove jack is at the top it's not on the side wall like the previous tent that is very very helpful when you want to put your stove in the center of your tent so it might be something to think about if you don't want your stove riding the side wall and you want it more centrally having your stove jack up top like that will allow that and what that means is you can spin your stove door so if you're opening of the door you could turn your stove wherever you need it to go so whoever's in charge of running the stove that night you could point the door towards that person 
And when they're sleeping, they can roll over, put a piece of wood in the fire, go back to sleep. So it's very helpful to be able to do that. It doesn't define sleeping areas like the last tent. Another key feature is with the doorway not being as tall, you can't walk in standing up. So you do have to duck in, whereas the last tent, you could freely walk in and out. So if you are a taller person and you're not really into crouching into your tent, that might be something that you might want to think about looking at the last tent as opposed to this tent. For me, it's not really an issue. I actually like this tent, the, the height of the door, a little bit more than the last because I don't need all that extra headroom to walk into. I would much rather have a closed door like this to help block out snow, wind, and rain. So coming inside of the tent, you can notice right where I put the stove, it is almost right next to the pole. And that's what I was saying outside of the tent is you can put it directly underneath the stove jack. And if I'm laying on this side, I can open the door. I could feed that fire all night. Or I could spin the stove. As long as this section is directly underneath the hole, I can spin it wherever I need it to go. So if you have a stove that happens to have a glass window on the side and it's only on the right side, you can spin it to wherever you can see that window, or maybe you want the window shining away to light up the other side of the tent, or maybe you want that front window facing towards you or away from you. You've got the option of spinning the stove wherever you like because it's right in the middle. Now what this means is this stove pipe is gonna be inside of the tent longer because it has to reach all the way to the top before it exits the tent. Generally, when your stove pipe exits the tent early, you're losing a lot of that radiant heat off the pipe. Having this set up, the pipe is inside the tent longer. You're actually gonna get a little bit more bang for your buck for firewood because the pipe is gonna radiate all that extra heat and it's gonna get trapped inside of the tent before the pipe exits the tent. That's another key feature to, uh, to kind of pay attention to when shopping for tents. Some tents, like I said, you're gonna lose that heat. Other tents, such as this one, you're gonna maintain a lot of that heat. All right, so coming over to our third tent. This is not a TP, it's not a dome. It's a very different style tent. Now. I should mention that the last tent that we were just in has two doors, so you can enter that tent both ways, front or rear. This tent actually has four doors. So there is a zipper that runs all the way down here. Now I don't recommend using a center zipper on a door panel that houses a stove jack, that's very dangerous. The other end of the tent you can enter in lengthwise, or you can enter the side of the tent sideways like this. So what this means is you can actually unzip the other zipper to this and you can pin this straight out like an awning during the daytime. So you can actually be sitting right here where I'm kneeling, right next to your wood stove, venting out a lot of that heat while you're cooking. And you can be indoors and outdoors at the same time. Now, like I said, this kind of limits to how you're gonna feed the stove because now you're sleeping in a lengthwise configuration. So either your head ideally like you would want your head up here. I mean, I know personally when I sleep in this tent, my head goes up towards the end. I open up the stove door, put wood in, close it, done with it. Um, but like I said, it, it does limit your sleeping area to, you, you can't really customize it is what I'm trying to say. Now, this tent is not a tall tent, so you can't stand up inside of it. That might be trip dependent, whether you need to stand up and get changed, get out of your snowy clothes or whatever. If you don't need a tent to stand up in, this might be one of the, the options that you're looking for. One of the main differences also is the, the shape. The shape is long. So you gotta think about the footprint that you're gonna need in the area that you're traveling. If you're going into a forest that might open up longer stretches of ground, this might be a better option over a teepee tent that's gonna require a large circle, which is typically hard to find in a really wooded area. This will settle in in a wooded area and in an area that has a little bit more hills, whereas the teepee style tent really does need a nice flat patch of ground to pitch properly. All right, so talking about the door features of a tent, if you do need a maximum amount of entry points or if that's something that you're into, having a tent like this might benefit you. You can enter from the end and do more of a kind of like a commando crawl inside of the tent. That doesn't really bother me. Um, if you want more of a side entry and you want to be able to sit down maybe on the ground with the awning stretched out have the stove next to you do some cooking this might be an option but showing this angle shows you what i'm talking about about sleeping the stove does stick out quite far the stove jack is here you don't really have a whole lot of option you can turn it on an angle a little bit uh, if you went with a smaller stove it might work better inside of this tent it won't be as long 
But as far as turning the stove, there's not really a whole lot of options for this style of tent. Now it is again a heavier fabric. It's a smaller tent though. So where the other tent, the Manta, the same fabric, was big and bulky, takes up more room. It's more for truck camping. This tent you could pack in in a backpack. It doesn't actually pack that large. You could definitely bring it in on a pulk sled, no problem. All right guys, so coming over to the next tent in the lineup, we have another teepee style tent. This is the One Tigress Iron Wall Tent. It is a very, very lightweight and very packable tent. The fabric is a ripstop nylon, so it dries very quickly. So if that's something you're thinking about hauling a tent in that may, it might rain, it might snow, you might be really wet, this stuff will dry very quickly and it still packs very light even if it's wet. Now, it does fit two people, however, it will fit them very tight. So if you're going on a trip and this is just your shelter for sleeping, you're not going to be doing any kind of wood processing in your tent or you're not going to be doing any real major cooking, this tent will be great to just crawl in, go to sleep. Now, if you're with one person just by yourself, you can process wood inside of this tent. It is large enough for a living space. It is large enough for sleeping and cooking. So you, you could be indoors all the time if it's pouring with rain and not feel cooped up. Now, the stove jack is not at the very top, but it's also not down on the wall. It's located kind of in between. I'll bring the camera around and show you, and we'll get the stove in here, get a better idea of what the footprint looks like. All right, so coming inside of the One Tigress iron wall, you can see that the stove is placed directly under where the stove jack is. You have two options with this, ideally. You can point the stove this way, and you can sleep on this side, which is normally what I do or you can spin the stove around and point the door in the back and sleep in the back facing the door. So that kind of opens up a little sitting area here to cook with the door open or be way back here in your bed with the stove and have a nice view outdoors if that's what you're into. Now there is one more interesting thing to take into consideration when looking for a hot tent and that is what type of weather are you going to be camping in? Are you going to be camping in rain? Are you going to be camping in cold wind? Is it going to be icy? Are you going to be able to get the pegs into the ground and get it secured properly? Because in a teepee style tent, if you can't get the pegs in the ground, you're going to have a hard time getting that tent set up. One thing that I want to point out, there's no snow flaps on this tent. Okay. So there's no snow skirt. This is a hot tent, but like I said, if it's windy, the wind is going directly inside of the tent. So that might be something to look at. Uh, I, I typically don't have a problem with that. Sometimes I'll even pile snow up on top of it. But like I said, if it's gonna be windy and there's no snow, all of that cold air is going underneath the tent because there are no snow skirts. So you might want snow skirts, you might not need it, totally up to you. All right, so coming over to the next tent, remember what I had just said about the last TP tent about getting pegs into the ground. This tent, you don't have to. It's a freestanding tent. So that means a number of things. One, you can set the tent up and if you do happen to have a hump in the ground or maybe a tree root or something unfavorable that is not where you wanted it to be, you can simply pick the tent up and move it to a different location and put it down very, very easily. There's no center pole in this tent. The stove jack is directly underneath the stove. So that means you can do the same thing as the last Nor tent product that we looked at, the big gray teepee you can turn the stove wherever you like. So if I wanna turn it this way, and I wanted to sleep over here and feed it, I can do that. I could turn it completely around. You have options to move the stove underneath of this hole. There's no center pole in the way. That also means that you could sleep a person in the middle and another person on the backside and still access the stove turned sideways, just like that. So there's a little bit more options with a freestanding tent, like I said. Pitching it, I can pick it up, I can move it. There's no center pole in the way. It just makes life a little bit easier. So moving on to our final tent that we have set up here today. This is a solo tent, much like the last teepee style tent, the small one, uh, with one major difference. This one is actually made out of cotton canvas, okay? So cotton canvas has benefits of its own, it has a lot of pros and a lot of cons. Some people prefer cotton canvas tents, especially with hot tenting because it, it's, it's a lot harder to burn. The other tents have a lightweight fabric. Sometimes you'll get the odd ember that'll come out of your stove and it'll touch the fabric. 
when it lands on a cotton canvas, it rarely burns a hole. Most of the time, it just bounces off and it's gone. With the sill nylons and the ripstop nylons, they burn instantly. And it can be a bit of a headache when you go out and it looks like your tent basically got showered on with sparks all night. And then it rains the next day and you're soaked. So having a small tent such as this with a large stove, it can take up a bit of room. So if you are looking for a small tent, you might also want to look for a small stove. If you do have a large stove, this can still be beneficial because you don't need to run the stove full blast all the time, which means you can do less cutting by cutting longer pieces and less feeding because you don't need the fire that big. So this may burn and keep it warm all night and only have to feed it maybe once. That might be something you're into. Another thing with this style of tent, as you can notice, I opened up the second panel of the door. This tent does have two of these, so I can open up the whole backside and be inside and still be outside. So if, if you're into having a, a kind of an adjustable setup, I can go ahead and I can close this up so you can see how much room I lose there. Or I could just flick it open and I can have the whole side of the tent open. The other tents that we're looking at, some of them have two doors, some of them have one door. So this has both a two door in the front and a two door panel in the rear. So a, lot, a little bit more options as far as opening the door if that's your style. Uh, but like I said, this is a, a one person style tent. So give you an idea of how tight it might be. I personally don't mind this. I really enjoy smaller tents, easier pack up, less footprint. It's not gonna take up a lot of room and it's gonna be really quick to, to set up and, and pack away. All right, so that brings us to the next part of the video. After we've looked at many different designs, shapes and sizes and materials of tents, now is the time where you break down what are you going to be doing and how many people are going to be going with you, okay? So once you figure out how many people are gonna be sleeping in the tent, that will help you rule out certain tents and it'll help you kind of get into what size are you expected to get. Because even though it might be a two person tent, like I showed you, you may want to get a three person or a four person tent to have a little bit more living space. Another thing to consider is what ground are you going to be sleeping on? Is it going to be really rocky and are you going to be able to get tent pegs in the ground? You might want to go with a freestanding option. It's all on where you're going, what you're doing. There, there's a lot of things to consider. Looking at this tent here with no snow skirts, that might be another thing to think about. Is it going to be windy or are you going to have a lot of blowing snow going into the tent? The tent directly behind me with that whole side panel wide open. Do you want a large view like that? Are you going to be able to crawl in there and get in there? Are you going to have enough room to sleep? These are all things that you really need to consider and think about. All right, so coming back over to our lightweight option for a large six person TP, let's talk about strength. There are a lot of guy outlines on this tent, which is a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. So if you're out and the ground's gonna be very, very frozen, you've got a lot of ice, that means you've got to get all of these pegs into the ground to make that tent very strong. If you can't get them all into the ground, it might not stand up in those high winds. This particular tent, where it is a freestanding tent, it does not require pegs to stand. However, it will require pegs to go into the ground to stop it from blowing away. This tent also, has a number of guy outs all around the tent. So to really maximize the strength of your tent, you are gonna have to guy these out if you're gonna be staying in high winds or maybe a long period, three, four, five nights in one area. Have a look at how many guy outs are required to stake out the tent, not only on the ground, but also on the sides of the tent, because that will be your total number of pegs that you've gotta try and get into the ground if you're on hard rock or if you're on ice you never know what's going to happen. It might be an issue to fight with. The same can be said with a small lightweight tent of only two people. It may not require a lot of pegs to go in the ground. Nowhere's near as many as the large tents do. But even this tent does have guy out points. So sometimes it's worth looking at how many need to be in the ground and also how many need to be on the sides to help pull it out. So when you start getting into hot tenting and you think that you want to go with a TP style tent, they are very good in wind. They have that natural design where the wind kind of rolls up over them. 
but like I pointed out earlier, you do need a center pole to help hold it up. Some TPs have a little tiny loop at the very top of them where you don't actually need an internal pole. You can make a tripod and you can hang it from the tripod or you could throw a rope over a branch and hike it up. But you do still need all of those pegs to be in the ground secure to give it form and, and, and to hold it, to, to secure it to the ground. So some of the easy ways to pick out a tent because I know all the stuff we've gone through is probably racking your brain a lot. There's a lot to think about. There's the center pole, there's no center pole, there's freestanding, non-freestanding, stove jack placement, material, size, shape, all of that stuff comes into play when picking a hot tent and sometimes it is the right tool for the job kind of scenario. So let, let's kind of recap here. If you're going to be going solo and you need something fast and light, the One Tigress Iron Wall Tent or that style tent might be best for you. However, if you're going solo and you're going to be staying a little bit longer and you plan on having a fire near your tent or possibly you don't want embers falling on top of it and burning holes, canvas might be an option for you. If you're going to be going in a large tent like I'm sitting in right now and you want to be hiking or maybe you want to be pulk sledding, Something with a lightweight fabric might be a little bit smarter of a choice. Now, if I were to go in a long truck camping trip, I would probably not go with a lightweight fabric. I would go with a heavier weight fabric like the Pomali Manta tent that we looked at earlier. That offers a little bit more resistance to tear and puncture. Although it's not canvas, it eventually will burn, not as easily as a ripstop or a sill nylon. So there's a lot to think about how you're going to get your tent pegs in the ground, where your stove is situated inside of your tent can play a huge part in the decision of buying that tent. Uh, I know the tent behind us over there, that Pomali hot shelter, like I said, the stove is all the way at the very end. That could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. The particular tent that we're sitting in right now, the stove jack is directly above the camera. It sits almost right off to the, to the center pole. That might be ideal, it might pose a problem. It all depends on your current situation. So really think about all of the, the situations. Now, there's one key factor that I haven't touched on yet. All of these tents that I've shown you, except for the solo canvas tent, have mesh inner options, okay? So this particular tent that I'm in right now has almost a three quarter mesh inner. Really interesting thing with this mesh inner and with the other Nor tent, the freestanding tent, you can run a stove inside of the tent with the mesh inner. The One Tigress Iron Wall, you can also do that. It's a half mesh inner. You can still have a stove inside of your tent. Now, with the larger tent, the Pomali Manta tent, it's a big tent, it's durable, but you can't put a stove in there. It's impossible with the mesh inner. Same thing with the tent directly behind us. A stove does not work in that tent with the mesh inner installed. So if you are in shoulder season and you are gonna be in, a, in an area where there are still a lot of bugs, but it's cold enough to run a stove, you might wanna look at what tents offer a, a mesh inner that also allows for a stove to be used and make sure it's safe because sometimes they're very, very close that they, they work, but they're not ideal. The tents that I have, they work and they are very ideal. There's ample amount of room. I go for a foot rule, a 12 inch rule of distance between the stove wall and the neighboring fabric just to make sure it doesn't melt. You don't want your stove too close to your sleeping pads either because I popped a few before and it's not fun. So there's a lot of things to consider. Think real hard on what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be going, the, the activities basically. So on my typical trip when I go out, if I'm going out hiking just for a real quick overnight, I may take the One Tigress Iron Wall. It's fast, it's light or I may take the solo canvas tent. I can have a fire next to it outside. I can cook over the fire, but I can still be really close to my tent. There's, there's all kinds of things to think about. If I were going out for a longer trip and I was by myself, I might even take this tent. The large six person tent, I can set up a table, a chair, a bed, a stove. I can have a whole house inside of the tent and I can have two doors open during the daytime to let some of the air through. Now. If I was going to another six person tent, like the Manta tent, there are very large moon shaped vents that could be zipped shut. There's also a removable nose cap. So if it is raining and is driving in from the side, I can open up half of the, the, the top cap, 
but I can't open the whole top cap. So that might be something to think about as well because this TP tent and the freestanding tent do have kickstand vents on the roof to vent out and they do work when it's raining. So all kinds of things to think about if you're gonna be in your tent doing a lot of cooking or if you're gonna be only in your tent during sleeping and bad weather. All right guys, so I saved kind of the, the best and the worst for last. Um, we're gonna talk about cost, okay? I've got these three tents positioned here purposely because they are three drastically different price points. Way in the back, we got the One Tigress Iron Wall. That's the most affordable tent on the market. Canadian dollars on Amazon, it's usually around 170 to $180 mark. Not terrible. The Pomali Hot Shelter over here is the mid-range tent. I believe it's about $250 to $300 Canadian. Check on their website because I may be wrong, but this is for sure between these three tents. That is the middle price range tent. Uh, and then over here, we have the Nord Tent Gammy Tent, which is almost $1,000 Canadian. That's a lot of money for a tent, okay? Now, I'm very fortunate. These tents, all of the tents that I've showed you today, they were all sent to me for the companies, okay? So I don't pay a dollar for my tents. Not everybody is that fortunate, and that's why I want to talk about this. I have a $1,000 tent. I have two of them. I've got the Lavu 6. I also have the Pomali Bunker, which is, like I said, pushing $300. You see a lot of this on YouTube. A lot of people have very, very expensive items. It doesn't mean they paid for it, okay? I love this tent. I absolutely love it, but I could never afford to buy it, okay? So don't think that just because I'm using it that I, in fact, went out and bought it because I can't afford to do that, okay? When I first started out, I did purchase a one tigress iron wall from one tigress way back when now i must have two or three of them that they sent to me so if they're affordable they work they, they're great tents i really enjoyed it and i spent a lot of time in them these tents are a little bit more durable which we've covered i also love those this tent has a whole new feature of being freestanding i also love that but price is going to be a huge determining factor like I said, not everyone is in the position to receive these things for free, okay? So I would not go out and buy a $1,000 tent for your first tent purchase because you might get into a situation where you realize you didn't need all the extra room or you didn't need the freestanding capability or whatever factor with this particular tent. You might realize that you don't need. You might go out and purchase this tent and realize I'm not a fan of the shape. Or you might go out and purchase the One Tigress tent and you might say, I'm not a fan of the size, I want something bigger. So your first tent purchase should be the affordable one, I would say, not necessarily that tent. You might find something else on a different website that's the same price range or very competitive. It might be a different shape, it might be a different fabric, whatever suits you best, go with that. But I certainly wouldn't jump in to the, to the higher end tents at first because you see it a lot on Instagram or you see a lot on YouTube. These tents do hold a large price tag. They're also for people that do this a lot. Okay, so the people that are going out and purchasing this, they, they basically live in these tents. They're out in them 24 seven, they, they use it a lot. So it's kind of the, the same thing as, as, as purchasing a truck. If you're gonna be doing construction, you're probably gonna want a big turbo diesel. If you're gonna be driving to, you know, back and forth to the coffee shop, you're not gonna need a big turbo diesel. So it's gonna be the right tool for the job, the frequency of use, how long do you plan on using it? How often do you plan on using it? All those things are gonna come into a factor. So wanted to leave the price to last because it is kind of one of those things that some of them are expensive, some of them aren't so bad, and we all have our limits. So I hope this video helped you guys out thinking about hot tents and some of the things you maybe didn't even think of when doing your purchase or looking at tents now, you might be rethinking, well, geez, maybe I should go with a different tent. Um, but anyways, the next part to this three-part series is going to be stoves. After that, we're gonna be doing safety. So I'm gonna wrap it up, pack all these tents away, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.